All right. It's such a lovely introduction, folks, and you don't care about me at all. What you care about is whether or not the next 12 minutes I have with you is going to give you something that you can perhaps take back to your teams, take back to your members, take back to your organizations, and help them with their competitive advantage. When we talk about competitive advantage, it is what are you better at than other people? And this can be shifted, your competitive advantage can be shifted if we, in fact, and can I get a little bit help on my clicker? My clicker seems to be cranky. There you go, thank you so much. Our competitive advantage can be shifted and expanded by our leadership and understanding our market forces. So I'm a leadership economist. What that means is I help people create stronger strategies with better data for faster and better results. Because we all have something where we are better than other people. The challenge is how do we, in this very competitive area, figure this out? And right now there's a lot of things going on in the world that are causing people to be more uncertain. There's more chaos, there's more disruption, there are more things competing for our time. So one of the tools I wanna share with you today, I've got two QR tools to share with you. This is my personal one that just gets you warmed up. Where are my people who like dogs? Dog people, mm -hmm. dog people. If you like dogs um, or alcohol, where are my people who like alcohol? <laughs> and not the rubbing kind, also helpful. You might be interested in this QR code. I think it's a little bit funny. We try to be funny. When you're an economist, you have to try to be funny. And no, I'm not that kind of doctor. That's a doctor of economics. My parents are very disappointed, very, very disappointed about that. So feel free to give a scan to this if you feel like it. I like QR codes because it tells people where to go. And it helps them people get there. Now, folks, right now on the planet, we are all affected by a series of world events, and our people are being affected by it whether they see that or not. So the question is, what do we do about it? In my long programs, I go through the challenges that people are looking at every single day before they come to work, before they see you, and what that looks like. The geopolitical crises, the economic crises, the workplace crises, and the domestic crises. And they're all playing on our sense of uncertainty. And then for many of us, we've got to address people as the individuals they are as leaders in the workplace. Everybody shows up to work with their own perspective, their own bias, their own things. And those issues are going to be what impacts you as leaders. And leaders, we have to have a plan, folks. We have to have a plan for all the contingencies. We have to have a plan for what's gonna happen next. Because most people just see the tip of the iceberg. As leaders, we have to see what's underneath the tip of the iceberg, and we've gotta have a plan. So I like to delineate this in four different categories. I love acronyms, it's a military thing. I was very fortunate to spend about 25 years on active duty in the Navy, and we love acronyms in the military, and this is my hat tip to my Army friends. Under the people category, the acronym is how do we be armed? How do we attract, recruit and retain, mentor, manage, evolve and develop our current and next generation of leaders? And are we using the right technology? Are we giving people the right tools? Are we managing the uncertainty that is so prevalent right now in our society and that's creeping into our workplaces? And are we growing in the best possible way? And in the center of all that is our competitive advantage, also sometimes termed as our value. So when your people are showing up like this every single day, it can be challenging to help them get focused. Because keep in mind, folks, if they've got a personal crisis that is getting in the way of all of those geopolitical and economic and workplace and domestic issues, that is going to take precedence. And let's face it, the world is uncertain. You could get hit by a truck. And a year ago, I got hit by a truck. As a motivational speaker, this is the best thing ever. If you don't like yucky medical things, don't look at this other stuff. Is there anybody here who works in the medical field? You're gonna love this, okay, great. So I got a whole bunch of broken bones. My older brother, who's the driver of the car, um, took these x-rays and then helpfully made little notes where he could find the brakes. There's several more brakes, he's just not medically trained, he can't find them. This is what my right arm looked like. It is not supposed to look like that. Again, if you don't like medical things, don't look, don't look, don't look. Um, my surgeon used to work at Home Depot, which was helpful. 
with the screws and the plates. That was super awesome. And when they took the cast off, I will tell you again, if you don't like yucky things, don't look, don't look, don't look. When they took the cast off, my arm did not look good. Um, however, I still kept my arm and I was very grateful. But that night, I was in a hotel bar and the bartender asked me a question. And it was one of the hardest questions of my life because the bartender said, would you like the six or a nine ounce pour? Because this was the first thing I was able to hold in my arm since the accident. How do you like me so far? Okay, there's that, all right, there's that. But there's a lot going on, folks, and people are worried, and people are worried about the economy. They are worried about what's going to happen next. They're worried about whether or not prices are going to continue to rise. True or false, everything seems like it's costing more money. True, you're exactly right. And you would be correct. Since January of 2020, when the whole COVID thing started to happen, until last fall, the price of things have gone up, and this is inflation. And when we look at the actual data, it's not just inflation, but it's shrinkflation. I thought the people at Doritos were trying to help me with my diet plan. No, not so much. This is shrinkflation. There's just less in the package. And this is causing people to look hard at economic issues. So our US GDP right now, you might be interested in knowing, we are the top in the world at $28 trillion. We find this by adding up our consumer expenditures, our business expenditures, our government expenditures, and then our net exports, which is a negative number. This is how we find our GDP. And right now, monetary policy is in the news. They're going to announce on September 18th what's going to happen with interest rates. Many people think interest rates are a big topic because it affects your home buying, your auto buying, your business loans, and it gives us a gauge on the state of the economy. Consumer confidence is how we feel as consumers when spending money, and it goes up and down. And right now, people are a little bit worried. University of Michigan tracks this. Our national debt, some of you care about the national debt. Anybody here actually have an economics class? Anybody ever have an econ class? Did you hate it? You hated it, didn't you? I don't blame you, I don't blame you. Because we look at things like this. This is our national debt, and this is a terrible slide. It's like the worst slide you're going to see all day. So let me blow this up for you a little bit. Our national debt just went over $35 trillion. $35 trillion. Did anybody here have a COVID baby? COVID baby, good. So you had a COVID baby, so your little COVID baby, their share of the national debt right now is $104,280. Your share as a taxpayer is only $268,000. $104,000 for your little COVID baby, $268,000 for you. And this is now. And then if we fast forward when your little COVID baby goes into first grade, this is four years ago from yesterday, all of a sudden our national debt, let me blow this up for you, is $46 trillion. And this then becomes about 148 times our normal GDP. And this is a problem. When it increases, our debt to GDP ratio increases by 148%. This is concerning. This is why, as an economist, I get up early every single morning and look at economic data, mostly so other people don't have to. And if I feel cheerful, I just go look here. It's fantastic. Our investments should make us feel good because the investments are up. Here's some math fun. If you have $100 and you make 20%, you have $120. If you have $100 and you lose 20%, you have $80. If you make back 20%, you still only have $96. Now, the reason I share that with you is because people are looking at their investments and they don't feel good about their investments. And we're seeing this in consumer confidence. When we look at the S&P 500 in 2022, it did virtually nothing except lose money all year long. And then thanks to AI, back in November, the market tipped up and it pushed us into really nice positive territory. And we've been riding this train ever since, which is awesome. This is the S&P 500. The Dow has followed suit. Again, less of a roller coaster because it's the Dow. NASDAQ is our roller coaster. And you've seen where the numbers come out. So this year, we're up by about 16% for the year, and that looks really good until you look back from a couple years ago. And this is where a lot of your people in your organizations are looking at their investments and they're looking at their 401ks and their IRAs and their SEP plans and their work compensation and they just don't feel like the economy is working. Even when the economy by a lot of numbers are looking good. Wages and salaries are pretty solid. Last year wages and salaries, the median, again this is the median, this is not the average, it's the median for a household, was over $75,000. And yet we still have 66.2% of Americans who are living paycheck to paycheck. 
If you want to figure out how much income you need to be in the top 1% of your state, here in Iowa, you need to make $484,000 a year. You can take a look at that. Isn't this fun? We get economics and geography. Yeah, it's a good day. It's a good day. So some people are stuck, and some people are really stuck. And when people are feeling really stuck, we have to help them. 77% of employees are worried about their jobs being replaced by AI. Folks, their jobs are not being replaced by AI. Their jobs are going to be replaced by people who can use AI and other technology. There is a difference. So what do we as leaders need to do? How do we create that competitive advantage? I have a vault of materials that I want to share with you. I share it with all of my audiences. This is my vault. Inside the vault, you're getting five components. First is my leader's blind spot assessment. This is to help people figure out where their superpowers are, where they might need a little bit of attention, and in some ways where their communication style might be helpful or not with other people. It's a superpower assessment. Part two is the 12-month business success and accountability planner. And that helps people figure out what their goals are, help them map them out to share with the teams, and stay accountable. Part three are my predictions for the next year. As an economist, I make predictions. Part four are my resources that are all uh, aggregated for you in areas where I thought might be helpful. And part five is a series of my five-minute plans. Here's where you go get all the stuff. See, we already tried the first QR code. Now we're warming up to the next QR code. I know some of you won't scan it because you've been told don't scan the link, don't scan the code. It's like telling toddlers not to touch the stove, and then they touch the stove. But really, it's OK. It's been vetted. It's been tested, I promise. Uh, this is the QR code that's going to take you into the vault. And then once you get into the vault, you have the ability then to uh, take the leader's blind spot assessment. There's another acronym that's going to give you uh, some results that might be helpful. So I'm going to go back to that QR code for just a second as I close out. Because folks, right now, people need you now more than ever. People need leadership now more than ever. Leadership matters now more than ever. And people need guidance, and they need direction, and they need accountability, and they need responsibility. But they also need things like hope and unity. And folks, this is why we're all here today. So thank you so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Turning back to Desi. Take care. Bye-bye.